Are you tired of watching shows that only give you general social media theory and expect you to figure out how to apply it to your own industry? Join us for this week's episode of Social Chatter, the industry's longest running social media marketing news talk show. Not only will you learn the latest breaking news, but you'll also gain practical advice on how to apply it. Now here's your host, Christian Karasevich. Welcome, welcome everyone to Social Chatter, your weekly social media marketing news talk show. This is episode 233 with myself, Jim Fuse, and this week's guest, Stefan Kaplan. So we've got a lot of news that we want to talk about this week. There's a lot happening across your social media channels from LinkedIn learning to IGTV monetization, Facebook monetization manager, and much more. So I'm going to go and bring on Jim. Jim's filling in for Phil Gerbershack. So Jim, how you doing? Doing great. It's good to see you and uh, excited for today's episode. Excited to uh, have Stefan on. Stefan is, uh, does a lot of really neat stuff, especially in the area of photography. He was a uh, formerly a supervising photo editor for the New York Times. He does a lot with the Pulitzer Prize uh, winners as far as doing the photography involving that. And he's also an adjunct professor at the Fashion Institute of Technology in the area of social media. And so uh, glad he could join us. Uh, we had him on the Tim and Jim show uh, a couple months back and really fascinating guy. And I'm yeah. sure he's got some great stuff to share with us. Fantastic. So we're going to bring on uh, Stefan. Um, you know, one thing also, like Jim, great seeing you, by the way. I know we we chatted earlier because we're working on our summit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Stefan. Stefan, how are you doing? Hey, how are you guys today? Great. Doing great. So I, I know. Go ahead. I am so excited to be here. It's so wonderful because I feel like I've got, you know, I've got something to do inside uh, rather than just walk outside and, uh, you know, um, look around at people trying to dodge each other on the street, even though there aren't that many people on the streets up here in Ramsey, New Jersey. Um, I walked by somebody yesterday who did a really big curve around me because I guess she didn't want to be even six feet next to me. Um, so I'm a very social person. I am a uh, hyper social person. So it really is affecting me tremendously. So thank you for being here and being, letting me be here with you guys. <laughs> Fantastic. I, I'm glad to have you on. You know, um, I know we try to get you on a couple of weeks back. Yeah. Uh, so it's good to have you join us. You know, I want to say this, like stuff we're not going to talk about today. Like we're going to briefly touch on, you know, uh, all of the stuff going on in the economy. Right. You know, I don't want to make this show about that necessarily. Right. You know, because it's just going to get people, you know, hopefully it doesn't get them like more depressed. No. Um, you know, and uh, I want to talk about like what all's going on because right. there's a lot across our social media channels that, you know, if you worry about all the negativity, right. uh, you know, I think that that will actually bring you down a lot more. You have well, to push through and look at the positive. I think that's a really great point, uh, Christian. And, um, you know, I know, I'm sure I know Jim agrees a hundred percent on that. Um, you know, the, I have a good friend, David Beard, who's a, a really great journalist who uh, has done many, many things. He used to work at the Boston Globe. He uh, has worked with uh, Pointer and many big journalism organizations, has one of the best feeds on Twitter um, called, uh, his handle on Twitter is Da Beard, D-A-B-E-A-R-D. And, you know, he once, not once, many times has said to people at conferences I've been at and just chats that, you know, we control our social media. We really do. So if there's a lot of stuff that is taking you down on social media, then yep. you need to do something about it. And you can do something about it by either getting rid of a lot of these people on your feeds or, um, you know, making sure there's more good news and uh, productive stuff on your feeds. And, and block, you know, not blocking, but mentally and otherwise blocking a lot of this stuff out, you know? Definitely. I think that, you know, I think those are great points, you know, and again, I mean, you, anything you go online and see, you're going to see people saying, well, Hey, how do I, you know, be more productive? How do I work from home? You know, I, th I think for me, like one of the biggest things is that I think most of these people actually, they're not prepared to work from home. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have either the equipment or they just don't have the skills to necessarily do it because it does. I, I can tell you firsthand, you know, working for a Fortune 500 company, it takes right. a lot of dedication, you know, right. and you can't just like, hey, I'm going to fire up my laptop. It's not, right. you know, uh, uh, let's see, what's the word? Uh, it's uh, grass isn't always greener on the other side, I guess. Maybe that's the right thing to say. So I, I think that's, you know, Jim, uh, please, uh, you know, uh, why don't you, uh, I don't want to, you know, um, okay. 
So um, the thing that's really important right now with all of this is that this is I think he froze up there for a second. So we'll have um, him right there. Oh, the best. Is. So what was that, Stefan? So no, you're it's saying fine. Things it's fine. Important? Oh, sure. I, we, we went out for a second. So I was just going to say that this is really a defining moment in history for all of us as human beings and as brands. And we all are brands, no matter what size we are, uh, small, medium, or large. Everybody's an individual brand. So mm -hmm. I think that it's really important right now to focus on what we can learn from this moment. And as you said, without dragging everything down, uh, and talking about all the negativity, let's start talking more about the positive things and the productive things that we can learn from this moment. Because this moment too shall pass. And when it does, we need to be ready to, um, to be able to continue with the path that we've been on and that we've uh, set and reset. Because a lot of people are at this moment now and are very confused and are also very worried because I've said this for a long time, and so have colleagues of mine who I work together, you always have to build your network before you need your network. And that mm -hmm. goes also for many other things in life with brands and their customers and everything else, is that if you, you have to relate to people and you have to relate to the world, and if all you're doing is always marketing, um, then you're going to get lost in the shuffle. And now, this is a moment where a lot of people are trying to figure out Okay, well, I've always been about one thing. How do I now broaden the scope? Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. So, uh, so Jem, do you want to um, do you want to kick things off as far as topics that we talked about today? Yeah, and actually, I think we've been hitting on a little bit, but let's talk about the fact that LinkedIn is offering some free courses to help people in the whole idea of working from home. Absolutely, I I think. I think that's awesome. You know, LinkedIn Learning, um, at being an adjunct professor at FIT, um, mm -hmm. they have a vast, a, a huge, uh, let me just say, treasure chest of options for LinkedIn Learning for professors and students. And I've recently started diving in more and more into LinkedIn Learning. And let me tell you, it is amazing. And everybody who can get into LinkedIn Learning should watch as many videos and lessons that they can. It is a wealth of resources. Definitely. So basically the bottom line here is this. So LinkedIn has rolled out free LinkedIn learning courses. Now I, I want to make sure I clarify that because Jim, you and I talked about this previously. It's not access to the entire LinkedIn learning catalog. You know, it's primarily geared towards helping you work from home, helping you to be more productive, mm -hmm. you know, how to build relationships with people when you're not face to face. So in a way it's actually helping you build some of those skills that, that a lot of people are lacking actually, unfortunately. Right. And, and, and let me also throw kind of a plug in for, at least I know it, where I live here in, in Cobb County, a lot of public library systems, even though they may be currently closed physically, if you mm -hmm. have a library card, a lot of them have online access to the full version of whether it's LinkedIn learning or Linda for free because mm -hmm. you're a member. And so it's another great opportunity for people it kind of goes back to Stefan's comment about resetting and getting ready for what you're going to do when this is all over. I, right. I really think, you know, time block yourself some time to learn. Take a look at these. I, I love that even in these 16 courses, they're yeah. comparing some of the different tools. Like, you know, they have something about Zoom. I think they have mm -hmm. something about, I think it's uh, Office Teams. Some of these things that you maybe never thought of. And even from the perspective of, and I know Christian, you and I were talking about this earlier today, mm -hmm. uh, just setting yourself up for future success and having a plan next time as opposed to scrambling. So this is, I think, a great way for people to start thinking about, you know, how do I operate my business when things aren't always quite the way I want them or continue yeah. to operate? I think people are going to find an opportunity to, to change how they run their businesses and see that it can still work. I I think, you know, I think Jim is absolutely spot on about that. And I'm so glad he brought up libraries because I'm a huge fan of libraries and I work at um, my library a lot. I consider it my second office um, and it's a pleasure to always be there. I lecture at the libraries. Um, I started a lecture circuit uh, before all of this happened um, and I was uh, teaching smartphone photography. But my point is that 
us. And um, in many towns, you know, your taxes pay for all of this. Um, you should take advantage of it. Uh, the libraries love for you to take advantage of all this stuff because it really increases their in-person and online circulation, and that helps them with getting funding. And I think this is a great point, you know, and uh, one thing I want to also, you know, highlight here. So if you go through, like, there are 13 hours worth of content here. So you, you know, so just think if people are like, if you're quarantined for like a couple of days or that, or, you know, a couple of weeks, sorry, you know, you could at least get one of these courses done per day. Uh, hopefully, I would hope that you would be able to get more than one, maybe a couple, because some of these are like 30, 40 minutes. You know, some of them are an hour. This one's 18 minutes. Another thing I thought that was actually fascinating was that there's actually a significant drop off. There we go. Drop off. Okay, you're back. Taking the working remotely course, there's 56,000 viewers, you know, and then it goes down to 53 for like time management. And then that's where like you start to see the big drop off. Right. You know, I think I think yeah. what you say is really important, um, Christian, because one of the other things is, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we all want to learn right now. But um, even if we can just um, listen to a lot of these videos and soak up some of the knowledge and 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 get in a groove of learning, learning and learning, because, you know, we're all so busy sometimes doing that we need to sit back and reflect and think about you know, some of the broader scope and what is it that we can learn rather than just always um, trying to do, do, do. Sit back, think, and 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 learn some more, you know? I think that's a great point. Uh, Jim, you know, what, what advice do you have for people that um, want to actually get through some of these courses? So it's 13 hours of content. You know, I want to see people succeed. So I would say that at the beginning of like every day, sit down before you've actually gotten into doing all of your work and study one thing, for example, you know, take one of these courses. Uh, what do you think, Jim? What would you? Would you yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is, you know, and, and I, I know that I have made a conscious effort, especially this past week. You still got to mm -hmm. put yourself on a routine. So if it means setting the alarm clock and getting yourself up at a certain time and maybe take those first two hours of the day when everything's quiet, especially for those folks that now the kids are all home and there can be a distraction and right. do some learning right? Take that one hour course or that 40 minute course, then maybe read a book, uh, you know, part of a book and then get your day going. But time blocking right now and, and having a plan is so important to set yourself up in a sense to be future ready. And I think, uh, you know, my, my kids old school system in North Carolina, whether they meant to do it or not, had started working with Microsoft several years ago, kids from third to 12th grade all have laptops that they're able to take home and work on See that? so yeah. i i think uh i think this is a great opportunity yeah. uh for people to learn some skills that they've been i think you know stefan you I, really all three of us being in the marketing and teaching space understand how things are constantly changing well now here's a chance for you to actually take a look at some of this stuff that's right and see how it applies or doesn't apply to your business or your professional life so, Stephen, what uh, do you have any other tips as well that you want to share before we move on to another topic? So, how can somebody get through this? Because you know, I could tell you, I think Jim, you and I talked about this last week that we've purchased courses and we've not necessarily gotten through them. Uh, what do you think, Stephen? And any tips you want to share with viewers? Yeah, I mean, listen, um, I, we dropped off for a second, but I get the gist of what you were just asking. Um, the the thing is that it's I, uh, let's take prime examples here, real life examples. Nothing's better right now. So I, I haven't done a lot of teleconferencing. Uh, actually, I've been a l part of a lot of teleconferences and many things, but I'm not the one that's always initiating them. I'm right. not the one setting up the, uh, the big meets and getting everything set, calendar invites for them, all this stuff. So mm -hmm. one of the things I did this week was each day I just set out to learn something new. So yeah. I, I, I refined uh, my skills in Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, I would videos and everything else. Um, I got friends on uh, and to practice with me, including uh, a Kevin McKenna, who's the deputy business manager, deputy uh, managing uh, editor of the business section at the New York Times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we got on for an hour together and we practiced some things. And then the next day I went to Uber conference and I set up my own Uber conference line. Um, now I can have up to 10 people on at a time. Um, I'm doing all these things little by little to increase my knowledge and skills of this doing, not just thinking about it, you know? 
Mm -hmm. And uh, Jim, you and I talked about this earlier today. You know, we talked about because um, we were uh, we were recording uh, some podcast episodes for our Launch Your Dot Live uh, podcast show that we have that we've been working on. You know, we talked about how um, it was about getting better just one percent each day. You know, doing even you know instead of like you said, stuff instead of just talking about something, let's actually move the needle. What do we do to move things forward? If I want to launch a new website. You know, I get my logo together. I, maybe I just do a basic WordPress install, any of that kind of stuff. So uh, that's, I think, a, you know, again, it's doing little steps to move you forward. Just keep always be moving versus, you know, like just being stationary. So well, there's two two things. I'll, you always be moving is going to be a new great new line to say to people because it's the truth. It's not just a line. The other thing is uh, my colleague Sri Srinivasan, who I work with a lot, is one of the okay. foremost social media uh, and tech experts out there, um, who is a, a professor at Stony Brook University right now. You know, Sri's always saying uh, the ABCs, uh, you know, uh, sorry, <laughs> always be learning, sorry. Um, and, um, you know, we used to use ABCs to always be creating, but right now, uh, with not going out that much, we're not creating as much, but always be learning, always be learning every chance you get. Um, and your point is really important. Set a time in the morning, like Jim said, get up early. You know, my brain is, I'm so mentally fatigued from everything that's going on late at night that I used to be a night owl because I worked for many, many years at the New York Times uh, from yeah. three to almost midnight uh, mm -hmm. on what was called the lobster shift. <laughs> and well, yeah, not a lot of people use that term anymore, right? But um, I used to get out of work at 11 o'clock at night and get home by midnight. And I, that's always been in my blood, in my DNA. But the thing is that now my brain is so mentally fatigued from everything that's going on that I'm finding it better to wake up early in the morning, even at five, six in the morning at, yeah. at the, and setting myself then rather than nodding at my computer at night, you know? Exactly. Yeah. I think you'll, you know, and uh, I think those are great tips that everyone shared. Uh, so, Jim, where do you want to go next? We talked about these, you know, these new LinkedIn learning courses that are being offered for free. Again, I dropped the links to uh, the remote working uh, course, basically, that LinkedIn has published. Uh, you take those, they'll give you, you know, a certificate that'll obviously go on your LinkedIn profile as well. But where do we want to go next? Let's uh, let's get into a little bit of camera stuff, because I know Stefan is a photographer. Let's talk about IG or Instagram is coming out with a dual camera mode. Hmm. So. What in the world do we have going on here? Yeah, what's going on with this? I've got a screenshot here or, or a short little animated GIF. I personally, I don't have this, but Jim, what do we have? Well, it, it looks like you almost can do a picture in picture and move it around. Uh, I don't have it yet either. I, I've looked for it. Uh, it. It'll be interesting, I guess, from a from a creator standpoint. And uh, especially I know with, with all the stuff that... Uh, Stefan likes to do with the uh, photos. Uh, how would you see using something like this, Stefan? You know, it's a really interesting thing. I have not seen this, I'll be honest with you. Um, and it's something that uh, I'll say this, whatever comes out app wise, there's always a way to find a, a way to just create something new and something really cool. Yeah. I always tell people experiment. We have all these things at our disposal. The problem is a lot of people sit on this stuff and it all goes back to what we said initially, doing instead of just letting it be there. I mean, um, take these apps uh, before the moment hits where you need to use them. Start experimenting with them, even on the smallest scale, because once you start using them, you'll realize how uh, productive they can be or that you never want to see them again in your life. You know, and the one thing for me, at least, so if I'm a business, I, I will say this, I, I feel since I don't have this, I feel that it's actually a requirement to have a device with um, potentially one of the dual camera setups. Mm -hmm. So like maybe the, I, uh, the iPhone 11 or the 11 Pro Max. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what I think you have to have to use this. Again, I'm speculating here because I don't have it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I know most of the apps that do this sort of dual camera setup, they do require it. Now, I think this is this could be a useful thing if you want to do, you know, like for example, say you want to do screen recording of your like desktop. There are apps where you can record your screen, you can be in a little bubble in the corner. Um, so I think that that's part of what this will be. Uh, but if I'm a business, what do you think I could do with this? Like, can you guys think of any creative ways to use this? I, I think you just hit on a great, great point, right? Like maybe you're showing with the back camera the the item and you the person is talking about it okay. that's how it's actually going to work like is it going to be 
photo slash video video you know we, we're not really sure yet other than being dual camera so i think that could be quite fascinating and and people forget how powerful these phones are now i mean they're more powerful than our desktop computers were you know a few years back so uh that's one way i would see possibly doing yeah. it M I maybe think... interview type I, I don't know that's uh yeah that's a good one actually as well no, yeah. I think I think Jim's uh, you know spot on again with that. You know, is that the the thing? So, for example, you can if you wanted to talk as a photographer about a photo, um, you know, and you're live on the video, you can then display the photo. So there's an example right there. Um, that's in fact, you just gave me a great idea, Jim. Once they, it, it, you know, this is why brains. This is another thing that's important in this day and age more than anything: brainstorming. Right. chatting about things with friends and colleagues such as yourselves and and figuring out things as we all go along here this is a great thing actually you put a photo up and me as a photographer uh who would love to talk about a photo well i can be live and i can show the photo in the corner there now there you go a great right. point actually i'm gonna i'm gonna go into this i got two other examples so mm -hmm. if i'm a real estate agent mm -hmm. i can see a real estate agent doing this where they're doing basically a navigation of a walkthrough at a house yep you know, I, I don't know how long the videos are necessarily being can be recorded for on this, right. but I think that would be a great way. You know, to your point, Stefan, as well. Like, see, I'm a same same an artist. Like I'm a, uh, for example, I mean, you could. This is, I mean, it's so easy to do this. Like you could say, okay, hey, I'm a musician. Why mm -hmm. don't I actually teach people, you know, what I'm actually doing on the mixing board? For example, if I'm a chef, for example, I could also be on camera and I could be, you know, it, it's almost like having a GoPro on your head or something like that. But sure. um, I could actually be showing like what I'm actually cooking, yeah. you know, I'm able to actually tap into the, uh, use the device for much more than just like, you know, weird, like, let me flip the camera around and type thing. This actually lets me do things, I think all at once. But no, um, Absolutely. I think, also, I think the real estate idea is a great idea. Actually, you could even put a photo of the house, you know, as you're walking around the house, um, you could put a photo of the house up in the corner there. So people can constantly see the house that you're walking around in. Yeah. And, and again, you, you don't have to do it either way. Like you could do the dual camera where, like you said, the camera is either, it could be the person, it could be the house and right. then you're on the other side. I mean, I, I like, love the ideas actually. Yeah. Uh, anything yeah. you else you want to share for this? I mean, it seems so basic, but there's so much utility, I think, for, to get people out there. No, I think it's really great. And I think one of the bad moves that Facebook did, um, they said they weren't getting enough traction, just going off topic here for a second, but it's still relevant, yeah. is they had the ability to bring guests on you know, when you were doing um, uh, Facebook Live and have them in the corner of the screen, uh, you can do one-on-ones now, but you can't do that anymore. And I think that's a big, uh, uh, I think that's something that Facebook should definitely bring back. Um, but uh, the benefactors of this are, are, are great apps and platforms like, um, like StreamYard. Definitely. So Jim, anything else you wanna add for this, uh, uh, for this feature? I, I mean, I think it goes back to what Stefan's talking about, right? When you start to get a chance, you know, play around with this stuff. My my friend Mike Alton brought up a, a while back, and I've started to do it more. And I know Stefan loves doing this, and I'm sure when we get into some of the questions we're going to ask him later, just going around and taking photos and not having, in a sense, a plan, but just remember, like, hey, I should take a photo of this. It might come in handy later. And And trying to get into that mindset. And that's where I think something like this camera could be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I, I'm excited. I, I hope I get this. I don't have it, but you know, I'm excited to get this. Uh, Jim, do you know if that's only available for Apple, uh, for uh, for uh, Apple phones or iPhones, or for a Droid as well? I, I do not know yet. I, I haven't I seen mean, it on my Droid, so I think it's only for Apple first. Yeah. So it's an interesting question. So like, I I was trying to figure this out, and I I know there are multiple apps that they do require you to have, uh, you know, the iOS, uh, the iPhone 11 or the 11 Max Pro. Um, or even the, like the iPhone X models, but I'm not able to figure out if that's like which model you know you need or whether this will be iOS or Android. I normally most of the dual camera apps like Jen you and I were looking at a, I think it was called uh, Double Take. Uh, it's an app by um, Filmic Pro, and you know it does this. It it requires having a newer device. Um, I suspect this is the same type of functionality. So, when we figure it out, we'll definitely let everyone know. But um, where else we go? Where we go next, Jim? So let's start to talk about uh, monetization. Let's go talk about IGTV monetization first. So everybody wants to, you know, they want to be generating revenue. You know, I will say this. I mean, how do you guys feel about giving stuff away for free right now? 
I don't realize that's a loaded question, but I, I think you, I think you have to help people as much as you can. And so, yes, there's a fine line. And, and I, I hate to say that I do think that there's people out there that are going to try to take advantage of people. Um, but I think that'll all come out in the wash. I've been through a couple of hurricanes in the past and I've seen that as well. Um, but I think, uh, you know, this is really within, and, and I think even you, you said, right. Uh, when we were talking earlier, this is to challenge YouTube, which monetizes. So mm -hmm. really, I, I think it's a good move on Instagram's part because I think they've struggled with giving people a reason to use IGTV. Well, now here gives you a reason to say, oh, I need to start putting some content out there so that, you know, I don't know if it's going to be based on number of viewers or those sort of things. But now you got a chance to maybe, you know, get, get a couple nickels off your content on, on Instagram. What do you think, Stefan? So like, so I mean, the bottom line here is Instagram is trying to obviously kind of copy YouTube's advertising model with IGTV ads. They're not rolling these out to everyone at the moment, which makes a lot of sense, you know, because YouTube, you know, as we know, they backtracked on monetization. Uh, they didn't want everyone to have it. Now you have to have, you know, a certain number of subscribers and a certain number of uh, hours watched or consecutive hours watched the content. Uh, what do you think about this? Is this a good move, bad move by YouTube or Instagram? Sorry. No, I, I think it's a good move. Um, but, you know, first getting back to your point about freebies, um, you know, and everything else, I think that this is, you know, really important at this point in time to understand that there's a certain amount of help that we need to give. And mm -hmm. there's also a certain amount of productivity that still needs to go go on. I mean, yeah. um, this is a, you know, I'm getting asked for a lot of things too right now. And mm -hmm. I love to share the knowledge and everything else. And I do a, a tremendous amount. And I share about other people. I think one of the things that we can mainly do to help the most right now mm -hmm. is share other people's content that's really important. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a, a very pro bono way of helping a lot of people. A lot of people don't think of it that way, but it is. When I share content on my timelines, I'm helping you, you know, and mm -hmm. I want to help you. And, and that is a, a, a big, you know, thing for many. Um, but no, I think this is a good move. I mean, um, I think Instagram's doing a good thing with this. Definitely, you know, and back to the point of like whether people should give content or give, you know, give their services away or not give them away. I mean, I'm, I feel like there's a certain point. Yes, like people need to, they should do it out of the kindness of their heart. Right. I think that you know, if I'm a business and I'm struggling, I really need to question how I'm actually running that business because, you know, you can't like, don't expect somebody to do something just because your business is struggling because for every business that's struggling there's going to be a ton of other ones as well that are struggling you know and like if everybody gives everything away um you know their services and whatnot then it's gonna i think it's gonna be hard at that point like you're gonna take a whole bunch of businesses out um so you know again you just you know yes it's good to give some things away but not everything in this case you know um igtv advertising i like that they're doing this i think as a business you know, if I'm not using IGTV, and this goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of the show, which is, you know, now is a good time to be experimenting with things. Yes, people's feet are going to be clogged with, you know, here's how, here's ways I'm productive at home. Here are ways that, um, you know, like, uh, how do I, you know, uh, how do I work from home? All of those kinds of things. You're going to see a lot of those topics, but, you know, I think you need to spend time consuming, like, A, getting you know getting some more education on things and be retooling potentially your strategy i think you'll come out ahead in the long run um, right. especially with this one you know i i think one of the big balances that people are going to have to strike right now because i've been observing this one of the things i am about social media and visuals is a student of the game so to speak i'm always studying what's going on and trying to figure out the real psychology behind everything um mm -hmm. and social aspects What's important right now is there are a lot of people that are trying to find, and I want to put this the right way, of course, um, they're, they're trying to humanize everything. Yeah. Oh, he, he's stuck. He's stuck for a second. So they're trying to humanize everything. Stefan, let's see if he comes back. And by okay. the way, this is one of the challenges. So you were saying they're trying to humanize everything. Well, they're trying, everybody wants to be, you know, everybody's trying to show how they're coping with everything. But I think yeah. there needs to be a good balance strike between um, what's going on in our lives, what's too comical, and also putting forth the, uh, the, the important points 
about um, about our lives and not just making everything into these uh, funny moments and everything, oh, light, you know, these lighthearted moments. Right, right. I think that's a good point. Jim, anything you want to add as well to this about IGTV? IGTV? No, I, I mean, no, yeah, but I, I think that was a great point by Stefan, right? Uh, it, when people, you know, because some people say, like, oh, you shouldn't market your business, et cetera, et cetera. But I think, you know, right now, right, here's an opportunity to start thinking, all right, okay, IGTV is going to monetize. Mm -hmm. How does my business prepare for this? Is it now time for me to take some of my longer form video, mm -hmm. repurpose it to fit the platform and, and tar start, you know, do one video a week to start if that's what it takes. But what are you going to do to, to and, and does it fit into your business? It, you know, it, it may not be for everyone. So, right. well, that's Jim's right. Jim's very big on this. And I really appreciate him always saying that is we always have to find and I, I back him up on this 100 percent because I'm saying I say it a lot, too, is yeah. you don't have to be on every platform and you don't have to be utilizing everything that's out there. Find what what works best for you also what you're best at because when you do what you're if you use the apps and the platforms that you're best at your best uh -huh. work will shine through i think that's a great point you know and uh also i mean keep in mind like with all of this you know with all of this that is going on right now i mean it's really also about being respectful as well you know uh, tim mentioned um you know that someone asked the question uh, if, you know if people are grieving for example would we sell at a funeral no you wouldn't sell you would offer to help even if it's free for now, I mean, I do agree, like, again, to a point, like if your business can't support giving something away for free, you do have to, you know, be careful about you know, how much you give away. Um, and cause again, you're running a business, you're, you know, so keep that in mind. Um, well, and that's, and that's an important point at this thing, Christian, we don't, like you said, we don't want to bring people down about everything, but we also have to talk about reality. Uh, mm -hmm. Unemployment and a lot of other things, there's going to be a major, major, this is going to be a long road folks. And we all have to buckle in, but we have to always remember that balance it between sharing and doing for ourselves as well and, and making sure that we uh, earn a living and everything else. But Tim Sohn, uh, Jim's partner in a lot of things, is doing something wonderful right now, which I applaud him for tremendously. He's trying to help people learn a little more about live streaming, and he's offered his services up for that for a lot of small businesses. Because let me tell you, small businesses right now, corporations are getting hit we know that airlines are getting hit right now the hotel business is getting hit right now but small businesses too are going to is going to take a wallop from this and it's wonderful if we can all give back a little to help them yep exactly it's not you know and you don't have to give back everything just give no. back a little bit I mean, right certain things here and there but you know be respectful of somebody as well like oh can i give right? a can I give a quick example of something? Yeah, sure. So I started a thing where every day I'm posting a photo of me and somebody that I know to uh, to make people just smile a moment in the day um, during this this really hard time we're going through. And I'm starting a thread on it, I'm put it, posting it every day on each platform, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. But my point with this is that, so take for example a brand, uh, mm -hmm. how they they can simply take photos if they've had them in the past of them and their customers and other thing and just do shout outs every day to people saying hey we're thinking of you we're uh, you know we're all in this together and it's uh, it's it's transparent it's honest and it's human these people have supported you all along now make sure you remember them and that they're in your thoughts and and that you you're caring about them and you're thinking about them you know definitely i think those are all really good points so Jim, uh, what do we have any other topics we want to discuss today? Or yeah, let's let's uh, let's hop over from IGT monetization to talk about Facebook's new monetization tool. So, what is this new monetization tool? Well, I think it looks like they're providing you a lot more detail in managing it. I know you had mentioned that uh, this is something that you were taking a hard look at. Uh, you know, a lot more because I I really haven't done the deep dive on monetization on Facebook. I think I've been more looking it's like hey i i want to get more youtube subscribers um because some of the some of the the things especially with video to monetize on facebook uh -huh. you really got to reach quite a level to get into their their little ballpark as far as number of viewers watch time and and things of that nature yeah i, I mean the hardest so i think the big part to a lot of this is you have to build a community um if you want to get the revenue to take off you know, you got to build a community and then you need to look at the metrics to see how things are actually going. I mean, the numbers don't lie. So like if you don't have, you know, if you're seeing a big downturn, like people aren't seeing your content, 
don't expect the revenue to go up, you know? And so um, this monetization manager, um, it's a very useful tool uh, for help, you know, if you're using Facebook's audience network, um, it's a great tool for helping you um, see like which ad placements are working, which ones are not, which ones are generating the most revenue, you know, and using that to help you guide you in making decisions, I think. Um, if I'm a business right now, like uh, Stefan, what do you think a business could do with Facebook Monetization Manager? Well, I think, you know, one of the things is, like you said, the numbers don't lie. So you have to you have to know the metrics. You have to understand everything that's going on that way. But um, one of the things I want to hit on with this, um, you know, because I'm always giving the the um, the more, you know, psychological analysis of some of this is that the messaging in a lot of what we're doing has to be on point. The visuals have to be on point. All of that, of course, will increase your your um, your uh, crowd uh, coming into you, staying in tune with you. And I think that, you know, one must be on top of the metrics with this. So um, I'm not also like Jim, I haven't explored this as much, but um, the messaging, in my opinion, and everything else and the visuals, if they're on point, it will help all the numbers and your crowd will appreciate everything that you're doing out there. Definitely. Jim, anything you want to add about Facebook monetization manager? No, I, I don't uh, really think there's much more to add on this one, but uh, let's maybe move to the next topic involving Facebook, which I really think uh, could be exciting for people is Facebook is going to be doing some business grants of up to a hundred million dollars. Wow. 30,000 people, 30 countries. Um, the details are still to be, fleshed out but you know it's good to see that they're doing the part to to uh help people and i like the fact that it's a grant program and not a a loan program definitely you know and uh it may seem a little bit limited i mean they're doing uh they're giving ad credits and cash grants to up to thirty thousand eligible small businesses in over 30 countries like again they're also trying to work you know so they have so they're trying to still work out some of the details here uh but Again, I mean, you can sign up for updates on this if you want to learn about Facebook Small Business Grants Program. Um, definitely something I think you should check out if your business is one that's been hit hard. Um, definitely, you know, definitely check that one out. Uh, what do you guys think as far as a business? What do I do? Like, should I like should I go try to apply for this? Uh, what what should I do with this? I mean, I, if you think if you think it's something that that's going to help you and that you fall into the category that they're looking for, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, think? I, I think, listen, small businesses um, need to do everything they can to stay on track, especially right now and get back on track um, and hang in there with this. I think any opportunity that you can get. So, listen, I applaud Facebook for doing this. Um, and I think that it's, um, you know, it's really important. It's really important. Are you going to go and sign up for this or are yeah. you going to sign up for this? No, I won't personally because I have, a, you know, a million other things going on right now. But I do think that some small businesses, you know, should um, I listen, explore it, read it over, see what it's about. Don't just pass it over and say, you know what a lot of people are going to say? Oh, well, I'm not going to get that grant from Facebook. So why bother? I mean, if you did that with everything in life, then you'll never succeed with anything. Right. And what we see at the beginning, we said, hey, move things forward one percent. So, you know. Right now, the easiest thing to do with this is sign up for their notification. So when they do roll out the small business grants program, you can learn more about it and actually see if you are eligible uh, rather than, you know, discounting the fact that like, hey, my business doesn't necessarily have a large amount of uh, fans, for example, or I don't generate a lot of engagement. You never know. You know, it could be a lottery. Who knows? It's it's hard to tell how Facebook's going to use this. Right. Um, so if I'm a business, the one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go test this. I'm going to go sign up for it. You know, big deal. I get a couple of emails. I can always unsubscribe. You know, and I have a good chance, I think, of uh, taking advantage of the Facebook Small Business Grants program. You know, this is the time um, for many big companies, many big companies to step up to the plate right now. And not just do they, they all do a lot uh, in certain ways, but now they can do even more. And they need to reach out to other segments that they haven't reached out to right now in society and people that are going to be affected across the board uh, with uh, what we're going through. So um, grants, uh, help in any way that can be possible from all these big companies needs, needs to be done. So I hope, I mean, Bill and Melinda Gates, for example, are always doing things with all that money. And yeah. you know what? They're, they're great, great philanthropists and 
thank God we have people like that in this world. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, Jim, where do we want to go? Do we want to cover any more topics? Do we want to move into Let, talking? Let's, with let's move into talking with Stefan about uh, the questions we gave him before the show. So for those of you who have, uh, you know, we have lots and lots and lots of topics to talk about this week that we aren't going to get to. Um, you know, we've got some additional, uh, we've got some Snapchat topics. We've got the new YouTube Explore feature that's replacing the trending tab. Uh, we've got a Facebook container from Firefox, which I think is also really fascinating for protecting your Facebook data, uh, or sorry, protecting your data from Facebook. Uh, if you want to get those, just go to socialsifts.com forward slash daily. That'll get you the, uh, the daily email that we send out, which will have the blog post recap, uh, all the questions that we're going to talk with Stefan about here, and also the tools that we're going to cover on Tool Time. Uh, so with that, I'm going to move into just we're going to chat with Stefan for here for a couple of minutes here. Uh, you know, we we um, you know, so Stefan, you do a lot of work with photography, right? Right. So quickly, my in a real quick summary here, my background is I spent um, 20 years uh, at the New York Times as a 15 of which were as a supervising photo editor for the wire service. I was also a freelance photojournalist, um, and I still am, of course. Um, and then I became a social media and uh, visual consultant. And I've been that for the past uh, 10, eight to 10 years. Okay. Now, the thing that um, I realized is that I took my journalism background and mixed it with my visual background and my social media, my passion for social media. And that's yeah. where I started my own brand called Spin It Social. Um, okay. I'm Spin It Social across the board on Twitter, Instagram, um, Facebook. I don't have a brand page because interestingly enough, my life is very transparent. I don't put my family stuff online and other things. I'm all about the arts and creating and visuals and communication. So my personal page on Facebook, which is Stefan Kaplan, um, and I have Spin It Social in the URL as well. I customize my URL. Um, you can find me there and friend me. Um, my life is an open book that way, so I don't have a problem with this. Um, but uh, everywhere else, I'm Spin It Social. So anyway, um, you know, I do a ton of consulting, um, but um, also I work with the Pulitzer Prizes. I've worked with AARP. I've worked okay. with Encore.org, and I work a lot with Sri Srinivasan. So... Uh, you know, we, we talked beforehand. We said, you know, hey, you're big into photography. Mm -hmm. um, we have a couple of questions for you that we mm -hmm. want to, or three questions for you. Uh, so, you know, to have you share some tips with uh, with viewers or people who are tuning in to the, uh, the podcast as well. So, uh, do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions? I don't know, I dropped off. Okay, I got you now. So, do you mind if we ask you a couple of questions about no, photography? Please go right ahead. Go right ahead. Okay. So, the first question we want to know, like, so what are, and this doesn't have to be three exact, but you know, <laughs> business, you know, they've got all this downtime right now. Right. What are three photos that they should have at their disposal, yeah. you know, that they can easily share with a client or, you know, on their own social media channels? Mm -hmm. Well, I, that's a really tough question, actually. So, and I was thinking about it a lot. Um, of course, you know, you always want a very personable and great, um, for example, if you have a team, you, you should have a great team photo, but I'm not talking the Ken and Barbie team photos. Um, this polished spit, perfect image of everybody. Take something real, uh, as I always say, keep it real, be transparent, uh, and it'll reflect who you are to your customers and about your brand. Okay. Um, the second thing is right now is, Jim knows, I'm all about creating things. Everybody on your team should always be looking for things to help um, put forth visually. So um, if we're going, listen, we're all supposed to stay shelter in place, so to speak, and also, but we're allowed to take walks and everything else. If you're out for a walk by yourself and you see something interesting, something that speaks about uh, the moment we're at in life or something else, take it and figure out a way to humanize it and to put forth a really important message about something. I did that just the other day with a photo that I took of a, a really perfect birdhouse that was hanging on this tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, oddly enough, um, it dawned upon me, it looked just like a little mini house. So I said uh, something like, um, you know, this is how we're all probably feeling right now um, in this time we're in. Um, and it's just making me think a lot about how difficult this is on so many people. Be back in a second. We're drawing this chalk art on the street that mm -hmm. said, um, 
uh, Corona time. Now, kids are kids. Um, they're going to express their feelings in many ways, but these youngsters were sitting there and they were drawing something beautiful on a nice sunny day. And obviously it's on their mind and we have to keep that in mind too, that we have to talk to our kids about this and, and, and make sure we understand what's going on in their heads right now with all of this. But there's many ways to share what's going out there in society and brands should do that. Small brands should do that. Definitely. So, so how do I do some of these from home? I know like if I wanted to take, for example, a, a candid team photo, um, I would probably say, hey, pull up a Zoom or do something kind of like what we're doing right now and grab a quick photo there. But um, what are, are there ways that I can, you know, uh, can you know, take some of those photos, for example? Well, this is the thing. OK, we're, we have to once again, we have to think about the moment we're in. So um, we're all working individually right now. Right. Uh, we're not even in groups. So what you're saying is really something. Wow. Look at how life has changed. We can't even get our team together to take the photo. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've been doing during this thing right now, and I'm going to do it right now. So everybody smile. All right, there we go. I just took a snapshot of my screen with all three of us. Nice. So guess what? I have a photo now of all three of us to put out there and talk about our experience today of being together, even though we're not together in real life, right? New way of thinking about this right now, folks. Now, I'll give you a quick tip. When you're doing these screenshots of people online, like yeah. we just did, I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, everybody smile. Here we go. Is that you want to make sure that you're taking good screenshots. Okay? <laughs> Tim's laughing, but he knows exactly where I'm going with this. Right. It would be so embarrassing and so wrong if you put a photo out there where Jim's looking like this. And right. Christian, you're looking like and I'm like, you know, it's just wrong. So take a bunch of the screenshots or get them ready for a minute. Take a screenshot. And there you go. You have something else to use image wise rather than being without anything. Right. Great. I think those are great. Uh, or those are great tips, actually. So um, going into the other question we had for you, by the way, uh, you talked about tools and apps and things like that. Um, okay. Are there specific tools or apps that you recommend that people should use yeah. to either improve their photos for their social media channels right you know or help them take better photos i realize obviously get a better device right but what do you think <laughs> yeah always get a better device so, so what's your take i'll be right back <laughs> Oop, I, uh, there we go uh i don't op i operate my uh samsung s10 um and i buy a new one every i buy a new one i lease a new one every year um, so I have the best of the best when it comes out, but so, app wise, app wise, I will say two things. There are two apps that everybody should learn about and create with right now. And it's crucial, especially if we're dealing with, uh, the need to figure out new ways of presenting things. Um, right. one is Adobe spark post. Okay. Yep. Definitely. And the other one, and the other one is the one that we all read about this year that made a lot of money before all this happened. And now they should be doing really well too, because people need to use it is Canva. Hmm. Yep. I think so. Yesterday, I was sitting around and I'm thinking. I I I started a new thing yesterday where uh, I posted on Twitter, in, uh, not Instagram yet, but Twitter, Facebook, and today I'm going to do LinkedIn, where I'm starting one-on-one -on -one social media consulting and coaching. And I found a photo of myself that a photographer a friend of mine, uh, my buddy, who put my first camera in my hands years ago, uh, Ronaldo Robinson at RMR Pictures took a great photo of me on the high line and I used it and I did it in Canva and I put my uh, spinach social um, name on it and a little light bulb next to it. It came out really nice. Um, can I screen share it with you for a second? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. So as soon as this comes up, we're going to yeah. bring it up. So we got Adobe spark post and Canva uh, two two really useful tools. Is it up? Uh, not seeing it yet, actually. You should there see it, it right there. See. Can you see it right there? Uh, I'm not seeing it, actually. You're not seeing it. Okay. Hmm. Did you use the share screen option? And I got it right here. Here we go. Oh, there you go. Okay. Okay. So hold on a second. Let me make sure. So this is it right, right there. Can you see it now? Uh, yes. The, the uh, Actually, uh, click up. What are you, your your uh, browser is actually showing? My browser is actually showing. Okay. Um, hold on one second. 
You want to make sure you pick the tab. There it is. We can see it now. Can you see it now? Yep. Okay. So this okay. photo right here of me sitting on the high line, I simply yeah. took it in Canva. Um, it's a high res photo. I put it into my phone uh, from my uh, from my computer. And I went on to uh, Canva and I found this uh, light bulb and I made sure the colors were right with the uh, uh, background of the steel frame there, the steel beam that's in my on my left. And I put my spin it social name on it with the light bulb. My friends also noticed my friend's watermark on the bottom, which I did not cut off because that he took the photo and I want to make sure he gets credit. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, so that's an example. Uh, I'll stop sharing this now. That's an example of something I did right on the spot yesterday. And I did this all in one afternoon. I put a post out about my new business uh, of coaching and I used that and all my friends are sharing it and I really appreciate it. But that's how easy uh, Canva and Spark Post are to use and uh, get in there, dig into them, these tools and start learning those too. Definitely. So I, th I think those are great tools. Uh, so. We're going to make sure that we put all of this in the blog post recap, uh, the tools that Sheld, uh, that Stefan mentions, as well as, you know, the different photographs. And uh, we'll try to actually get some examples as well from Stefan, if you have them. Right. Uh, so I wanted to mention one thing. This is really important. Brands can really do this uh, right now. And I think everybody should learn this period. One of the things I've become a big fan of doing, um, I latched onto this recently by what do I do, Jim? Just create, right? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm on, I started getting big into stories on Facebook right. and Instagram. And then I realized, you know, you can download these stories. You can download the photo that you've created in stories with this great imagery. Um, and if you go to my Instagram feed at Spinner Social, you can check out some of the ones I've created. Now with videos, so you can download this. My point is the photo with this new creation you did with special effects and stickers and everything else. And then if you download it, you can then use it cross platforms. You can use it on Insta on, on Twitter. You can use it on Facebook. You can use it on LinkedIn if it's proper. I mean, if it's apropos, so to speak. Now, make sure that what you're posting on certain platforms is the best thing that you should be using on another platform. Just because you're posting something on Facebook doesn't mean you should post it on LinkedIn and vice versa with Twitter and Instagram all around. So the, my other point is that with videos with this, now be yeah. conscious of the fact that if you want to download a video that you've created in a story that has some music on it or some audio, it may not necessarily allow you to do that and it'll come up and you'll be able to use it, but there will be no sound. Why? Because it's proprietary. So when you create these Instagram stories that have music to it, like uh, you did a thing for International Women's Day that had Alicia Keys' Girl on Fire song put to it. Well, mm -hmm. I used that on Instagram and Facebook, but I wasn't able to then download it, which I did anyway, and tweeted it out because the visual was cool. But the music did not show up because Alicia Keys and uh, whoever it is that um, Arista, whoever their, her company is, record company, you know, you, they, it's proprietary. Definitely. So I think those are great points. Um, with that, we're going to move into tool time real quick. We're going to share a couple more tools with everyone. Um, so the first tool that we're going to share this week, by the way, so like each week we try to come up with tools or hardware that can help you as a business. And in this case, you know, we were talking a lot about Canva today for photography. Uh, the tool I want to first talk about is NVIDIA. Now, on the surface, this actually is basically, in my opinion, this is Canva for video. Uh, have you had a chance to actually use this or uh, test it out? I, I have not yet, but uh, it it definitely looks uh, very interesting. If uh, if you wanted to share my you're sharing my screen, I'm going to kind of sure. scroll up and people can see it here. But you yeah. can see how it's got all these templates similar to Canva, and then you can also size them based for stories. You can do articles to video which is always a, a, a fun thing to do. Um, we've highlighted some other programs that'll let you do that. Uh, and then you can also start out with that blank template. Uh, yes. my, my only, and, and I, and you know, this is just me cause I'm always looking out for the small business. Right. What I don't necessarily like, and I, I think you just have to look and So this is the yearly price. So it's 120 a year. If you go to monthly, it's $20 for the, 
startup thing and they do have a trial, but you have to look here. There's some limits. There's a limit in how many um, video exports you can do per month. Okay. They also have a limit in how many photos and videos you can get a month at the $20 level. Mm -hmm. And so there are some other tools. I, I think even the tools that uh, Stefan brought up with, as an example, Adobe Spark, mm -hmm. you know, you can do Spark video. And the other thing that Adobe is really famous for is they have a lot of free photos that you can use for commercial purposes. And there's no limit, not to mention Spark, is free unless you decide you want to get the branded right. version. So I think it's it's definitely got uh, capability that you might want to check out. I don't know that it's for everybody. Uh, I, I'm always not a fan of any time, you know, maybe it's like, I just don't like limits at my age. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be honest, right? I just don't like, I don't like you telling me I can't do something unless I give you more money uh, for a tool. So that's uh, that's one of the things, you know, and, and that's but I do. I think it's got some great stuff. I mean, I know we've talked about Wave Video before. There's a lot of tools out there. Find what you're comfortable with, because otherwise you're going to have a bunch of tools and you're not going to use any tool. So, you know, I, I think Canva and, Wave, and Adobe Spark to Stefan's point are great starting points. And then if you really want to start to look at this other stuff, uh, you can do that. So that that's kind of my my perspective for for in video, but uh, yeah, I think it's worth checking out. Yeah, I, I agree with Jim 100%. And, um, you know, I think it's really important also um, that, um, especially given the road that we're going to be on right now, that everybody be very careful with every penny that they're throwing around. And I think that there's so many great tools out there that we can use that we don't necessarily always have to uh, give more money uh, for certain options. Um, but if it serves you well, then rightfully so, go with it. Um, but just be really careful in terms of how many things you're subscribing to right now and throwing your money around as small business owners. Be very conscious of it, the bottom line. And if I may throw in one quick thing here, uh, since we're speaking about creating in visuals, once we get past this turning point and we're all allowed to walk outside again and breathe the air together um, mm -hmm. and feel together again, I can hardly wait for that moment already. Is that um, businesses need to think about doing this. Always think about creating your own stock image library with things in daily life before that time comes where you need them. Everything in life can be documented and create things. Uh, find moments in life. Get your team to pool all their photos together and create your own stock image data bank that you can use. And then you always don't have to have all these stock image photos that are just perfectly made and look like they're cat catalog photos. Jim knows I have a hot foot for this. I think these are, I think these are actually great points. Um, so uh, definitely fantastic points. You know, And overall, I mean, again, test out the tool. See what you like, see what you don't like about it. You know, and like I said, there's there's a lot of options. To me, this is like, uh, video. It's like the Canva for video. Um, so the second tool I want to talk about real quick is a tool called Yellow Duck. Name sounds a little weird. I'm not exactly sure. You know, that doesn't tell me anything about the tool really. But basically, what it does is it's an Instagram Live video tool. It allows you to stream Instagram from your on Instagram from your desktop. So do you want to tell people about this one? Yeah. So I actually uh, played with this the other day. I, I've tried it uh, twice. So Yellow Duck, you're going to download it to your Mac or your Windows computer. And then you're going to log in to your Instagram account. And it's going to give you a RMTP uh, key, so to speak. So you're going to have a, a, a web link and a key that you're going to put into a tool like in my case, I did StreamYard because StreamYard will let you do RMTP and they've got some other description of what you can do. And so I actually sitting on my computer mm -hmm. went live on Instagram for about 30 seconds. I didn't say anything. I was just kind of playing with it. And it then saved on my stories. It gives you that option. I did try it a second time. I was trying to multi-stream and for some reason the link didn't work. So it could have been operator error, but it did work. Um, I think for some people, right, it might be worth it because sometimes it's hard to be walking around with your phone in your hand doing a good live. And so I'm I'm curious to see, you know, I may try it again on Instagram. Am I able to see the comments or do I need to have my phone 
set aside separately where I can watch the comments as they're happening. So maybe I can respond to my audience. So definitely interesting. I know this has been the one thing that many people want is the ability to live stream to Instagram in an easier way than their phone. So, uh, and you, and some people may be concerned because like I even had to do some special things to allow the Mac to download it. You know, it's like, Hey, we don't trust this, uh, company sort of thing, but, uh, I went ahead and did it. My computer hasn't blown up yet. Um, and, and it may be the same thing with windows. It may have you download a couple of packages that you're, you know, concerned with, but if you've got good antivirus, I, I don't, I, I wasn't overly concerned in that regard. So, uh, you know, definitely worth checking out. Um, uh, worst thing is you just, you know, it doesn't cost anything. Um, so worst thing will happen is just say, ah, it's just not for me. I, I think it goes back to what we were talking about all along, which is um, try things out, play with them, experiment. What do you have to lose? I mean, uh, you might latch on to something that's going to sp uh, really just spark your creative juices. And once your creative juices get sparked, look out. I mean, you know, that's when it, the magic happens. Yeah, but I think those are uh, all great points there. Um, so with that... Uh... I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna wrap things up here. I mean, you know, again, there's not a whole lot to Yellow Duck. Again, test it out. Works with many uh, tools. So if you want to use like StreamYard, you can use Yellow Duck with StreamYard. You can download OBS, which is a free download. Firecast, it's a paid download. Basically, anything that supports RTMP. Right. Hey, Jim, uh, Christian and Jim, if I may, uh, right now, since we were talking about earlier and throughout the show about helping each other with a lot of things, this what? is uh, not about me. This is about colleagues of mine who put together a wonderful conference this Saturday online yeah. uh, called Social Media Weekend. It's Sri Srinivasan's flagship event every year. We were going to hold it live at Pace University. Uh, now we're doing it live online on Saturday. If you look up the hashtag, Um, this is going to be an incredible conference all day of online learning with top speakers, including uh, Cheryl Wu Dunn and Nick Kristoff from the New York Times, and uh, many experts like Jeremy Kaplan from the CUNY Journalism School, the Craig Newmark um, CUNY uh, Graduate School of Journalism, who will be talking about all the apps that people should be using. Uh, there's a great price involved with all of this, so come join us online on Saturday. Really appreciate it. Nice. We'll have you uh, drop the link in the comments on the Facebook post. So yes. really appreciate that. Um, so if people want to get in touch with you, by the way, uh, what's the best way for them to do that? Uh, with me, it's uh, at Spin It Social um, on Instagram, on Twitter. And also, uh, my uh, I'll give you my email right here. Uh, well, maybe I'll refrain from the email, but uh, I don't want to get spammed galore. But um, it's at Spin It Social on Twitter, on Instagram. Also, please feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I am a big, big person. Uh, who I love LinkedIn. I've become a bigger and bigger fan of LinkedIn. I think it's one of the most powerful platforms out there. And we all need to make better use of it. So look me up, Stefan, S-T-E-F-F-E-N, Kaplan, K-A-P-L-A-N on LinkedIn. And please do connect. And let's stay in touch and uh, reach out to each other and see how we can all help each other. Awesome. Fantastic. So with that, uh, let's go do it for Social Chatter, episode 233. If you want to get the blog post recap, that's going to go out this weekend, socialchefs.com forward slash SC233. We also have a podcast version and a much shorter Alexa flash briefing, socialchefs.com forward slash Alexa and socialchefs.com forward slash SC podcast. Uh, with that, uh, we will see you all next Thursday. We're going to be joined by Chris Stone at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And that's going to be on YouTube.com forward slash Social Chefs or Facebook.com forward slash Social Chefs. I uh, hope you all will take a moment to join us. Uh, Chris is a big audio guy. So if you're looking at you know launching a podcast or uh, tapping into audio on live video, getting really good audio out of it, uh, make sure you tune in. Uh, yes. So be safe, be safe, everyone, be well. And number one thing right now, listen to the experts and flatten the curve. Okay. Amen. Right. So we'll see you all next week. Thanks a lot for tuning in. All right. Bye. Take care, everybody. Okay. Bye-bye.